Section 14.8 is a slightly odd section. If you are familiar with any of the Year 2 Applied course, the first chapter on the statistics of, uh, of the Year 2 Applied is basically the same stuff as here. So this is kind of a statistics chapter, which they've cut and pasted slightly into a section of the AS level course. And I think the idea is they want us to know about this at AS level, um, even if you're not continuing to A level. If you uh, want more detail, I have done a video already uh, and it should be up on the playlist for the applied book, right? So uh, feel free to, there's the year two applied book, chapter one. You might want to look at that one in line with this. I will go through it here, um, and I, but I'll try and make it a fairly uh, brief video. It's a bit of a complicated idea, but I'll try and do it as quick as I can. So this is how it would work. Let's say I've got some data and it looks like this. Okay, so this is real life data. I've measured two things, X and Y, and I've got this thing. And you're looking at that and you're thinking, well, it's not a straight line, right? There's not a line of best fit here, but maybe there's a sort of curve of best fit that looks like this. And what could that be? Well, maybe it's a quadratic or something, right? Maybe it's um, Y equals X to the power of two, but maybe it's a cubic. Maybe the, you know, the, the, the closest thing to this curve would be a cubic that would sort of do this. Uh, so maybe it's Y equals um, A times X to the power of something. Okay. Now, how do I look at that? Well, there are whole loads of statistical tools for looking at whether data, x, y data is close to a straight line. And we can do all sorts of things with straight lines. But if we start including all sorts of other curves, then it's going to be harder to deal with. So we're going to use a special trick. And the special trick is this. If we suspect that this data is close to um, a polynomial type thing, a cubic or a quadratic or something like that, then we would do this. We'd say, well, we think this is the relationship. If that's the relationship, well, I can take log on both sides. doesn't matter what base, uh, but usually we take log base 10 here, so I'm just leaving it as log without writing a base in. That's what uh, that means, log base 10. Now we'll take the uh, multiplication rule, and I'll use the power rule on this bit here. So I get log base y equals log of a plus n times log of x. And now I'm going to say, well, instead of, instead of making this sort of look fiddly, I'll change log base y into a capital Y. And I'll change, oops, I'll change log base x into a capital X. So this equation becomes y equals log base a plus uh, n times x. And if you look at that, remember log base a is just a constant. So that is the intercept, and that is the gradient. So instead of plotting my variable x against my variable y, if I take logs of all this data, and then I plot log, base, uh, log of x against log of y, then I should get a straight line. If I was right about this relationship, I get a straight line. So if I get a straight line, I was right about this relationship. If I don't get a straight line, then maybe this isn't a good relationship. Maybe this isn't close enough, right? So if this is close to a straight line, then the data is close to a relationship that looks like this. If this is not close to a straight line, then maybe the data isn't close to a, a relationship that looks like this. And not only that, but if I look at this straight line, so if I, if I plot the data, it's close enough to a straight line, I draw a line of best fit, and I look at the gradient, then the gradient of that straight line is the same as this n here. So I know what power there should be on the x. I know whether it's a cubic or a quadratic. If I look at the y-axis intercept, that's the log of a. Well, from the log of a, I can find out what a is, and a is the coefficient that should have gone in front of there. Okay? So I've got data. I think it follows a pattern like this. What I do then is I take the data, I plot log of the x data against log of the y data, and I look, have I got a straight line? If I have got a straight line, I look at the gradient and the intercept of the straight line. And when I say the straight line, I mean a line of best fit, right? I look at the gradient and the intercept of the line of best fit. They will tell me the a and the n, and that is the model that I can use for my data. I can say that the, these data, x and y, are linked by this algebraic relationship, okay? And I can use that then as a model. And that's the idea. Now, obviously, we can have lots of curve shapes which aren't of this form, okay? Now we can't deal with every possible model that we might want to think of ever um, in, in one section 
of a pure mass textbook, right? For, uh, but what we can do is say, well, we've dealt with models that like, look like that. Um, what about if we deal with models that look like this? Because this is an exponential model, right? So if I, if I think my data, x and y, follow an exponential relationship, remember that's a, data, a relationship that would look like that. Um, if I think that's the shape that my data is making, or my data is sort of close to that shape, then let's see if I can, I can find a way of checking that. Well, if I take logs on both sides, which maybe isn't a surprise this time, we're using the same trick as before. Uh, log y. Uh, so now, addition rule on this side. Log y. Um, and power rule on this side. Log plus x log b. And now, um, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, I'm going to leave, uh, I'm going to say let big Y equal log of Y. So this is Y equals log A, well that is just a constant number, plus log B, that's just a constant number, times X. So if I plot log of Y, against x and I get a straight line, then that was the relationship between my data. Okay, so I've got some data x and y, I think they might be forming an exponential relationship. I take the log of all the y data and plot those numbers against the x values. If I plot the log of the y data against the x values and get a straight line, then I was right about this exponential here. Not only that, but if I get that straight line and I look at the line of best fit, I take the gradient of the line of best fit, the gradient is log of b. So when I know, let's say if the gradient was 4, then log of b is 4, so I can find out what b was, and then that would mean that y equals a times 4 to the power of x, for example. If I look at the y-intercept of that straight line, then that is log of a. If the y-intercept is 6, then, sorry, if, if log of b is, what did I say before? If log of b is 4, Let's just check I've got this. <laughs> Let me just make sure I'm saying this correctly. Uh, then that would be 10 to the power of 4 equals b. Okay? So um, b would be 10,000. So I think I said before that 10 would be, b would be 4. So um, if the gradient is 4, then we work out b. And it's not the same as the gradient, but we can work it out from the gradient. If the y-axis intercept is 6, then log base a of 6... Uh, log base a equals 6, so 10 to the power of 6 equals A. So we can find A and we can find B if we know the gradient and the y-axis intercept of our straight line. Okay. For both of these questions, let me just recap it again. You suspect a relationship. Instead of plotting y against x for your data, you either plot log y against x or you plot log y against log x. Which one you pick depends on what relationship you suspect there is between the data. Then you look at, is there a straight line? That is a statistically easier question to deal with, right? We, we've got this, sorry, a mathematically easier question to deal with. We know the maths behind that. We um, look at whether there's a strong linear relationship. If there is a linear relationship, we can look at the line of best fit. And from the gradient and intercept, we can find the value of a and b, or that value of a and n there. And that is everything we need to know for section uh, for chapter 14, which is the last chapter, and the whole of year one is covered. I hope that's helpful.